I turned a business that was making literally maybe 1500 a year um, to right now almost $500,000 a year. It's Kellen, and today on Diversified Game, I have the owner of Narratique Med Spa, based in South Florida, Miami, to be exact. Cassandra is the owner, and she's going to tell us how she started this med spa. I'm telling you, if you go to her Instagram, where the link will be in the description box, you will see. She is living her best life. <laughs> she definitely knows her purpose, and she is growing in it. And we're catching her on vacation. Cassandra, <laughs> welcome to the show. How you doing? So much for having me thank you for coming on thank you for coming on I, I, I tell us how you got your start and, and about your background all right um basically i have uh two pre-law degrees um undergrad i have a graduate um i have an mba in business but um before i had the mba in business i had the pre-law i went to school um to be a lawyer one year that didn't work out. And um, me and a friend of mine, um, we were like, you know what, let's open up this uh, teeth whitening business, you know? And um, we got, we both got one machine each and um, we just started doing teeth whitenings. And then she decided for whatever reason to, to leave. So now I'm here stuck just doing teeth whitenings by myself. I really didn't know how to advertise or whatever. So, um, I just started, you know, looking up, like, how should I advertise and stuff like that. I was very new. Um, my boyfriend at the time, well, fiance at that, at that time, he didn't literally b believe in my business. He didn't believe in me. And I remember him saying these words. Um, I thought I was going to marry a, a lawyer. And um, this business is not going to work. So because he said those things, I was like, you know what? I'm going to push hard and I'm going to make this work. So anyhow, long story short, I was a paralegal for like 10 years. And um, they kept firing paralegals. Um, I was a foreclosure paralegal at the time. And every time they lose a client, you know, a lot of us will be fired. So um, I remember being at my last job and they were laying off people. And I said to myself, you know what? On um, this time, I started adding a few services like lashes and cavitation. And I said, you know what? Um, if they fire me, I'm just going to give my business my all. I'm not going to try to get another paralegal job. I'm just going to just go headstrong. I don't care what my boyfriend, uh, my fiance has to say. Um, if we don't got it at the time, then we don't got it because I'm going to give my all to my business. And that's what I did. I gave my all to it. And he was like, oh, he kept making me feel like it was never going to happen. So that pushed me even, you know, it propelled me even more. So um, I, and my business ended up just going like, it ended up just like, kind of like being like one of the number one med spas, literally. I was the only one at the time doing fat freezing, um, uh, one of the one of the two med spas in the area doing cavitation, uh, radio frequency. Started doing facials, doing basically everything that um, the woman wanted at that time. And um, I turned a business that was making literally maybe fifteen hundred a year um, to right now almost five hundred thousand dollars a year. Awesome. Awesome. Love to hear that story because somebody listening will say, my business isn't making the money I thought it was going to make on paper when I planned it all out, but you kept pushing. And what a great story. I think uh, many entrepreneurs, I would say the majority doing, you know, hundreds of interviews for, for different, you know, even platforms that you need sometimes that person to say no and that person close to you. My wife is that person for me where it's, are you sure that's going to work? Because she's a scientist, not necessarily a business person at the time. Now I've got her to be a business person, but I remember through the two decades of knowing her, are you sure that's going to work? Hey, that sounds risky. So I love how you just opened up and let people know because you need that in life. You might want to go marry him. He might have the $10 million idea uh, next. 
<laughs> you know, he, he might push you to be like, oh, okay, okay, you think that? Because if everybody's just kissing your butt, it's very easy to be like, oh, okay, I'm doing all right, and it's okay, but that he pushed you. What did you do to push it from the 15 to the half a million? Like, was it just more time? Were you more intentional? Was no, there a formula? I think, I think what happens when you give your all into a business and you're like, it's like tunnel vision. You know what I'm saying? Once you give your all into anything and you believe in it, it has to work. Like there's no reason for it not to work. You know what I'm saying? So you have to invest in yourself. And literally I took my, um, my tax return money and I started buying machines and I started investing in me. And when you invest in yourself, you can't go wrong. Like you can't lose on yourself. Like there's no way. You know what I'm saying? So I couldn't lose on myself, but I damn sure at that time was not going to have him say, I told you so, or yeah, I knew you couldn't do it or whatever. So that, that just like, you know, like just propelled me to like, you know what I'm saying? I'm just going to, I'm going to have to win, you know? And in the long run, it didn't work out between us. We were together for like six years. And after we left, I ended up meeting someone else, getting married, you know, and I'm just really happy. I'm like, really really at a great place in my life right now and it, and it looks like it it, it looks like <laughs> it and you know you can even just tell by, by by the energy can you talk about how you started was it just you and i ask that because i'm always um preaching and teaching about you need a purpose you need a plan and you need a team and I'm sure that you have all of those things, but how did you develop those things? Because a lot of people struggle with the plan and the team, especially when it's into paying them a yeah. you know good wage. So how, do, how does that work for you? Um, you definitely need a team and you have to kind of like trust your team. Uh, that has been sour and sweet for me. Um, I've gone through a lot of assistance and, um, and um, uh, what do you call it? Like, um, not really business partners. I would say mostly assistants. Some has stolen from me, but I mean, in the end of the day, when I hire someone else, I don't look at it like, oh, they're going to steal from me too. I just give it my all and a lot of them work out and some of them don't. A lot of them I push to become a better person. I push to open up a spa. I've helped so many people and so many assistants better themselves. You know, so I don't want, I don't ever want an assistant to believe like this is where it stops. I'm going to be here and you're going to be here. I'm going to always propel them to want to further them, their career, their education. Hey, you're not only my assistant. Hey, go and get that es esthetician license. Go ahead and try to open up this spot. I'm going to help you or whatever. And then I get another assistant. You know what I'm saying? Like I always try to help, especially people of color. Like we have to do that, you know, we're the only um, race that kind of hold us back, hold ourselves back. So I always try to help, you know, our fellow sisters and brothers out if I can, so. Now I have a, 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 a this is a totally a personal question because just moving to South Florida and opening up another two businesses that are, are, are baby businesses, I find that, you know, when trying to hire black, in this area that people are a little standoffish where I, I mean everybody else for one of our businesses hire like that another business you know it's labor intensive and to find black people and it's like well i don't know i've never heard of that before well have you heard of a check you know um and so have you found it difficult to hire black because my Afro Latina and Latino brothers and sisters, that they, you know, they're all down. It's like, hey, give me mas, you know. But this Black American, I find it to be like standoffish. And I know I've been in the South. I've lived in the South. But it's. Do you find that same thing, or is it different in Miami? Um, no, it's the same here. Actually, um, for the last year and a half, I have um, no. For the last year, I have a. Uh, a uh, Hispanic woman, she's, um, she is it, so weird. All right, so when I had a black assistant, I wouldn't have as much business. And it's crazy to say this, but I wouldn't have as much business as I have like right now because I have someone who speaks Spanish. So I guess probably because we're, we're based in Miami 
and she can relate to a lot of the clients because most of my clients are Hispanic or white. Even the white clients prefer to see Hispanic. Weirdest shit ever. Um, excuse my language. <laughs> you know, you're good. Yeah, they prefer to see a Spanish woman than seeing a black owner. You know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. the weirdest thing. So what, what I noticed when she's, she's doing what she do, they think that she's the owner. And I let them go with that. I don't want to be like, oh, I'm the owner or whatever. I let them go ahead and believe that she's the owner. She knows her stuff. And they just automatically go there. She has to be the owner. And I let them go ahead and believe that she's the owner. If that's what you want, then hey, you know, it, most likely, um, usually after like their services, second or third or fourth services, they'll probably know that, hey, this is not the owner. But they're already paid. <laughs> so, so I really don't care. But yeah, um, hiring a black person sometimes can be very difficult. I've went through a lot of black people, believe me. <laughs> um, but it can be very difficult to find that one. But I got a perfect receptionist. I got a um, good assistance with me now. But it takes a while to find that one that you kind of gel with. So. Okay. And, and, and I'm a, in my real life, I'm a consultant and I'm a publicist and whatever other titles they give me. But I've had, you know, folks who own restaurants tell me uh, there's a Jamaican place um, um, around the way from me. And that woman doesn't, I said, you're the owner. She was like, how'd you know that? I never tell anybody that. I said, man. It's the same thing. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, this is a Jamaican place. Who else would own it, right? Um, a small Chinese guy. But she was like, it, and I've heard from other clients that they've heard the same thing of restaurant folks that like don't, especially if it's not a black like feature theme, you know, soul food, Jamaican or something like that. Um, and so I just find it interesting because we work our butt off. So we don't get that stigmatism of, oh man, black PR. Because I'll be honest, in PR, We've done testing with uh, known people. White publicists actually get a different response rate to certain networks, and we've proven it. With, yeah. So what do you do? You, you sometimes have to put somebody in front that doesn't look like you. And I know people from all around the world, so that's not difficult in PR because you can do that from your, you know, your home, whatnot. But I just love how you shared that because people will think we're crazy. I know people probably would think you're crazy if you said that and said, oh, you just think you're special, Cassandra. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, um, and, 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 and for those who do think you're special, because you are special um, and, and everyone should be, they, they might hear your accent and say, where is she from? De Donde Eris? Jamaica. She, okay, Jamaica. <laughs> in the grill, Mobe, what side? St. Andrew, in, that's in Kingston. Well, there you go, folks. I've answered the question you were thinking about. Um, <laughs> and, 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 and that's <laughs> real good. I was really like, you know, think I was like, you know, you know, hiding my, you know, I've been here since I was like seven. So I'm like thinking I have no kind of accent. <laughs> Well, it's America, so everyone has an accent. I am from Okanda. You know where that is? Okanda. Is that next to Wakanda? It, it's, <laughs> it's, right out, it's right inside of Oakland, California, after you see Wakanda. And so, you know, but I, I love to travel. And I, I just, I don't know what accent I do have, but wherever I'm at, I could be in South Africa. People say, are you from here? Because, you know, you, you're greeting me in Zulu or, you know, Tulsa or whatnot. So it, it, America is full of accents. So that could have been a Miami accent, you know, for all we know. What, what um, is it like, how do you go from, you know, you're opening up the, the day spa. How do you add on services? The thing that kind of tripped me out was the freezing. I've seen that, but I've never seen a black person doing the freezing. And I'm like, does that really work? Like, can I get my six pack today? If I just go, you know, get my stomach frozen? Like, how do you add these services on and tell us about some of the services? Okay, so I have so many services. So one of the services I do have is basically, it's like a cool sculpting. Of course, we can't use that name because it's copywritten. 
So we have to, we call it fat freezing. So basically it works through a process called apoptosis. And what that does is it freezes your fat. You, um, it actually kills your fat cells and you pass it out through your urine. So you have to drink like six to eight bottles of water daily in order for it to work. So it's not like something that you can do right now and then you see the results right now. Literally it takes four to six weeks. However, when a lot of men get my services, they tend to see a difference before the woman, you know, of course, because of the body mechanics and their, you know, their mechanism, their bodies are totally different than our, um, than women. So they, they tend to see a faster result, but you definitely do see a result. It definitely does kill about 40% of your total body fat in the area that you're working on. And how long does that last? Uh, it's killing your fat cells. So you don't have to worry about gaining weight in whatever area that you're doing again. So let's say you're doing your arms. There are some people who, you know, who they do their arms or their stomach fat. So you're losing 40% of the total stomach fat or your arm fat, you know, your back fat. So if you keep doing that area, then you're losing more fat, more fat cells are dying and you're going to see, you know, a better result. And do you see results instantly or does it take about a week? No, it's going to take four to six weeks. It's going to take four to six weeks. And yeah, it can even be more longer than that, up to 12 weeks. But you're definitely going to see results in, the, in six weeks for sure. Okay, so is that something where you can do once and then wait for the results or is it better to come in every week? Um, you can actually get everything done. If you're doing multiple areas, you can get everything done that one day. Yeah. Or if you're doing the same exact area, you have to wait about a month to do the same exact area again. Because we can't repeat it, you know, until after about a, uh, a month or six weeks. Okay. And the, since I do have, I do microblading, micro shading, I do lashes, I do teeth whitening, I do cavitation, um, all different kinds of facials. I do lip, lip pigmentation. Uh, let me see, what else? Um... Everything is of except hair and nails. <clears throat> hmm? I said, don't forget the, 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 the lifts, the Kulo, the Kulo lift. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that seems to be, uh, just so everybody knows, our, our friend and, you know, former guest, Evelar Savior, um, is the one who put me on Cassandra when she was doing all her work. And I was like, wow, okay. And, and so all those services, they can be seen on your website. And for those who don't live in Miami, when you come visit, you know, you can come get some work done. That's, that sounds awesome. You know what I would love? I just don't like to get the game, but I like to give it. And I would love to see you do like a YouTube channel on- I'm actually working on it right now. I am. Okay. Oh, okay. when will it be ready? I want to say in about two months, it's going to be perfect because right now I'm moving my business to Pembroke Pines. Um, so I got a new storefront. I didn't tell anyone yet, but you'll be the first. Um, I got a new storefront right now. The interior decorators, they're decking everything out, you know, to get ready for the grand opening. I don't know the grand opening date as yet because I'm waiting for everything to be perfect in there. I just came out with my waist trainer line, a new skincare line, and um, it's going to just be bomb. Like this year is going to be bomb. So after I do all of those things, then I'm going to focus on my uh, YouTube channel. So right now I'm just doing a lot of promotion and stuff like that for the new um, services that I'm going to, you know, add. I'm definitely going to shoot you an idea or two because yes. what I what I could see with looking at your profile and now talking to you, you definitely are an influencer and that YouTube, it's not quick money, but the fact of the way you market it and how it can turn into a six to seven figure flip, the, if you do it, you know, consistently and put the love in. Just like you said, you put more time into your business, you got more out of it. But I definitely see the influencer in you. So that that's awesome to hear. When will the book be ready? Because I also see a book slash, you know, full documentary in you as well. That's funny you say that. I've already written a book. Um, it should be ready within three and a half months. 
Awesome. Awesome. I'm going to send you something on that too. And I'm going to share this game with everybody. When you write the book, make sure not just to have it on Amazon, but to remember Ingram Spark. Have you heard of them before? Ingram Spark. It sounds familiar. That name sounds familiar, but no, I don't know. So, uh, so Ingram Spark, I have a publishing company, Fomanke Publishing. And Ingram Spark is why you have to have it there is because that's Amazon. The libraries won't buy from Amazon. It has to be through a wholesaler. So it has to be either Ingram Spark or um, Bakers. And there's a reason why I say Ingram Spark because it's a little easier for someone who has maybe just one or two books out. But I, I definitely see that in you. And, you know, I mean, you're in Miami. Um, yeah. You know, Viacom is right there. I mean, TV okay. shows get made like that. So that's the world that I, when I came down here, I said, we're taking our movie game and all that to the next level. So Miami's going to be my um, third home in South Florida. Because, um. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it's, 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 it's awesome. So I definitely see that in you. But what are your, you know, your goals? You might have other, other goals, um, you know, outside of the med spa. So tell me about them. All right. So basically, of course, I just read a, uh, written a book. So um, I'm self-publishing right now. Um, that's one. And um, well, basically, I kind of want to make more residual income. So I've been buying up houses fixing them up and um, selling them back, renting them out. So, you know, I wanted to make more passive income, you know? So um, I like working nine to five or nine to six or making my own schedule. I do like that, but there comes a time where you want to work smarter and not harder. So, um, so I like making money outside of my business and it's going to come to a time where I just have, I just hire people to do what I do and make an income from that. I don't really want to, don't see myself for the next three, four years working as hard as I've been for the last seven, eight years. So how many hours are you putting in a week so the people can know what it takes? Uh, I've been putting in about 90 to a hundred hours weekly, like easy, easy. Yeah. And before I met my husband, I won't say, um, I, every time I try to do it now, it's a problem. So he's like, oh, you need to come home before seven o'clock, before it gets dark and stuff like that. He wants me to come home like at five. And I'm like, I'm so not used to this. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, I know he's looking out for me. He's scared that, you know, if I leave too late, if, you know, and where my business is located is, is Miami Gardens. I've never had a problem there, but everybody's scared of Miami Gardens. So, um, but before I met my husband, I would go to work at seven o'clock and literally no lie. I would leave at, um, work at eight o'clock, nine o'clock every day. I'll come home with a bag though, but I'll be doing 12, 13 hours easy every day. And I, and the, the, the craziest thing is I know a lot of people, especially I won't say black people, just, I'm going to say people, um, when they make that kind of money, they want to put everything on a hold and go on vacation and stuff like that. I didn't go on vacation for years. Yeah, I couldn't even afford, I could afford to go on vacation, but I couldn't afford to go on vacation because I didn't want to lose any clientele. You know, so um, I had the money here, here it is. I had the money, but couldn't go on vacation. You know what I'm saying? But I know it's like a lot of people when <clears throat> they start making money, they're like on vacation all the time. I just started going on vacation. Literally, it took years to build my business. And I literally just started going, um, getting to a point where I can go on vacation and be comfortable. And not stressing myself out like, oh my God, are these people going to come back? Or yeah, I know they want to come in. And, you know, because clients, they, they don't want to hear, oh, I'm on vacation this week. I'm two weeks from now. Oh, I'm on vacation. I'll be back. They don't want to hear that. Even with me, if I go to um, a no person and they're like, oh, I'll be on vacation next week. I'll be like, okay. But when they keep doing it, I'm going to be like, man, I need to find me another nail tech. You know, that's just the reality of it. So I couldn't afford to take any vacations. I didn't want to. I just wanted to like, I know what it felt like being, um, not having it. And I didn't want to get to that place ever again, especially with, before I was married, before, um, when I, when I left my, my boyfriend, it was kind of um, hard, you know what I'm saying? Just, just 
um, doing everything by myself, not having that other partner to, to, to do a lot of stuff that, you know, like that men would, would help you with, you know? So I had to do everything by myself and I had to hustle to get to basically to where I am now. Well, what it sounds like is you were trying to prove yourself. You had a system that works because I know I tell my clients, you can't afford not to take a vacation. And sometimes when we're working, we make it like a vacation when we're all traveling the way that I, I have it like set up because mental health is a thing and you have to find your tribe of people who will work the way you work right. and they trust. And, and, and so, no, I'm glad to hear that. burned out. And believe me, I have gotten burned out. There have been days where, and it's crazy. And I was saying to myself, is something wrong with me? Because I know I, I, it's, it's, I had money. The thing, the thing um, I didn't have was a peace of mind. And I was burnt out. And I would cry sometimes. And I'm like, why am I crying? I shouldn't be crying, I, you know? But I was burnt out. And I was like, you know what? I have to stop it, you know? So instead of me working six days, I limit it to like five. You know, what about cloning yourself, cloning yourself and finding that help? I mean, you have people who can do the other work. Is it because of licensing? You have to be there for certain procedures? No. Um, no, I think a lot of people want to just deal with me. So because I've tried that. So what I do, I have my assistant who does like the fat freeze. She does the cavitations. She does the teeth whitenings. But now when it comes to like lashes, microblading, lip pigmentation, facials, more clients will, you know, they're like, well, I want Cassandra. You know, I don't know you, you know, <laughs> it is, you know, it is what it is. So they're, you know, so they want me. So that's, that's why. But what I'm going to do with this new shop, I'm going to have someone work directly with me so they, they're able to see her work. So if I'm not available, they can go to her and they're like, well, I like how she works or whatever. But I've tried that in the past and they're like, I don't like how she does lashes. I don't like this. I don't like that. And, you know, they compare the two. So I'm going to get this bomb lash person to come in and teach her what I know, how I do it, specifically how I do it. So, you know, you know they have an alternative. I know what it is. I mean, you have skills. That's definitely, you know, you have skills. But what it is, is your personality overpowers anybody else that you're next to. So you can have someone do it with you, but you'd have to like, um, callate la boca. You have to be quiet because you have to let this other person be the energy so they can get used to them. And so either or, because the same thing in home healthcare, it's like you get this healthcare worker who's great. Then you try to bring someone in because this person you need to shift over and you can't do it because this person is so great. And it's very rare you find people like that in healthcare, but that's the issue you have. Your personality is so huge. So you're going to have to let the other person be funny, feed them the lines. And that's, you know, easier said than done, but I know you'll get it done because yeah. I can see you opening this also in Jamaica and, and globally, you know, it seems, it seems like you, you could have courses in this, the way that I'm hearing that your brain works, where you can teach this. Like you said, you've oh, taught- I've been, this. I've been teaching for the last three years. I teach and, courses on how to do what I do. And how much is that? And where can people see that? Um, they can come to my page. They can DM me or call me on my 1-800 number if they would like to um, the book, um, you know, to, to, sorry, not the book. I'm so used to saying book an appointment. They can um, come at my 1-800 number for a class. Um, the classes are usually eight hours. It's a boot camp class. Um, it is $650 for a lash class, $650 for the body contouring class, uh, which includes the fat freezing. Um, it's $500 right now for the teeth whitening class, and that's a five-hour class. Um, I bring my own models, and you have a live model to work on. Um, there's no, like you, you do work on a dummy, but you do it before you leave work on an actual person. So you know exactly what it is that you're doing. Um, it's a very, very good class. Most of my clients, 90% of my clients end up opening their own med spa or end up doing really, really, really well. And you have, you, you have the option to call me anytime after any of my classes, whether it's a year, two years from now. You can call me to get any kind of information that you need. I'm always available for my previous clients. I mean, 
previous uh, What's the minimum age? I have a 10 year old over here. I'm trying to, you know, oh, we talk about his business. What's the minimum age? Um, 18. You have to be 18 and over. Okay, reserve reserve my spot um, you know, for, for, for her. That's, that, that's beautiful. And that they, <laughs> yeah, I, I love that. W- what about, because I see, um, I see a gap too where I love the hands-on, but I also see the online course where you can teach the business side because you definitely need to get paid for that. And there are, there's a great person right in Miami. I'll share you uh, a link that she actually would do the full course for you. If you oh, that would be awesome. So yeah, you you hear that. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, Dr. Tracy, shout out. Yeah, we, 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 love, we, we love being able to connect. I'm a connector. But, I need your help, honey. <laughs> yeah, pay, pay or no pay, this is what I do. This is who I am. And so I'm a walking billboard and I've just, you know, I just <laughs> see it and I'm like, okay. And, and since tomorrow's not promised, we got to act today. But, um, but so, so that, that's great with all your success. What is your community give back that you are doing or that you want to do in the future? Um, my give back right now, um, my brother, he has a church. So right now I'm giving back to the, the church right now because, um, he's trying to, he has a private school, but he's trying to make a charter school. So um, I'm getting him um, the help he needs to build that that charter school. And um, from there, I want to build, you know, like parks. I want to be able to help the homeless, you know, stuff like that. But right now I'm giving back to the church because the church is what's doing all of that right now. They're helping the homeless. They're doing all of that. So I want to make sure that I build that foundation first and then I can move on to other stuff. Awesome. I'm, I'm so glad to, to hear that. And I know that we could go on for days, but we're going to take some of this offline. Maybe you guys see it in the game overload because I don't right now want to give you a game overload. What I want you to do is go and, you know, check out Cassandra's page. When you are coming to Miami, I want you to book some time. You can come back with a whole new body, which would be awesome. That's but- true. <laughs> But, but make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and be blessed as always. Thank you so very much. Game.